right, all right. Hey, so great to be with you all and just to worship the Lord together. We're starting a new series here on Launch Sunday, and we've entitled All Things New. And today, as you can see, we're going to look at um, a new heart. So we're going to be in the book of Philippians. How many of y'all love the book of Philippians? Anybody? This is like the most joyful book, you know, that Paul wrote. Um, we'll, we'll note he's in prison writing this, so he is uh, content in every circumstance. And today I have a special message, really for all of us, but for our, our students, for our parents, all the families, everybody kicking off this new school year. We're going to talk about five marks of a new heart. How do you know? A question that I'm often asking when I look at Scripture um, and I see that, wow, the Spirit is speaking to me, telling me that I need to do this or that. Um, I often have to ask the question, do so in, in sermons, how, how would I know? How would I know if I'm actually doing this thing? Last week we talked about generosity, you know, of life and time and energy and resource and all that kind of, how would you know? There's two explicit, one's explicit, very explicit. You're a giver. That's how you would know, right? If you're not, okay, you're, you know, not so generous. You're tight with your stuff, your time, your energies, whatever that might be, your gifts, and then the other was, hey, where's your treasure? What do you, where, where does your mind go, your passions? Where does it run? Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. And, and that's what you worship ultimately, right? And so in this season, what we're talking about is the fact that he's making all things new. It comes from this umbrella passage. It's actually in the Old Testament. Isaiah is the one, God said, through Isaiah, he said, I'm doing a new thing. And so many of us, uh, I'm talking to many of us in these days, throughout the summer, God's doing a new thing among us. I think he's been refining his church across our nation over the past year or a year and a half or so. He continues to do so, refining us as his followers to say, you know, it's not about circumstances as we've been singing. He's the provider. All that we have in him is more than enough. I was uh, in front of a couple last night getting married and I said, listen, if all the love you need you've already found in him, then you can love one another freely without any need for love in return because you're not always going to get it, right? And we can just give love to people like we're made of it because we are. And that's what we're going to be doing throughout this season. We're looking to love God by love. How do you love God? Loving people he loves. That's how. You know, it, yes, we sing songs, we praise him, we encourage each other in the Lord, we teach, we guide our children, all of that, we serve others, but we're going to be uh, loving our city. This week, as noted, we're really, we're going to close our time, in fact, praying and commissioning all of our teachers and our educators, even our parents and students as we head out to this new school year. Next week, we're going to be um, encouraging, praying for, and serving our healthcare workers who've been through a lot. It's like they've run a marathon. They can just get to the end and go, uh, sorry, another marathon. And that's really what this season has been like for them. We, you know, our medical team and so many personnel here, uh, healthcare professionals, just a crazy, crazy season. And so we want to, we want to encourage them. And then we're going to pray for our first responders, our police, you know, law, law and order types who are like, man, this is a crazy season. And they've been serving us here. Um, we have, you know, we have security guards who are here, who are police uh, men uh, and women throughout the week. And so we just want to affirm and encourage you all. So it's a good time for us to say, let's, let's just be that non-anxious presence that the Lord has allowed us to be in the world today. And I want to welcome, we have a, a couple of guests with us, one special guest here. I was at Jack Lowell Elementary on Monday, welcoming the kids as they come in to the school where we serve so much. I know that Sandra Barrios is here, and I think she's in this service. Sandra, are you here in this service? Yes, she's right over there. Stan, we'd love to just say welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Everybody online, Sandra Barrios, yep, she's here. She's too humble. She's here with about, I don't know, a dozen or so. Some of her teachers are here. Uh, because we just say, hey, come join us. Uh, we just want you to know how much we love you. You can meet her right out back there. Uh, some of you know Jack Lowe ends up being this blue ribbon school. I mean, it is an amazing story because of her leadership and how great God has, has been to them. And we're, we're the ones blessed. We show up there and we, we leave like, wow. Um, God is working through our principals, our teachers, and we're so excited. Well, let's go ahead. Turn to uh, Philippians. Book of Philippians, a new 
heart is what we're going to talk about. Each week we're talking about he's given us something new. He's always doing a new thing. Um, and yes, that's where I was. Isaiah is the one who says, hey, forget the past. He says, don't, don't, don't even think it. Forget the former things. I'm doing a new thing. How many of you know God is always doing a new thing? Because he's an eternal God with eternal love, and he's got always a new thing. He says, I'm making a way in the desert. I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm, I'm bringing streams into the desert. And whatever you need today, he is here to say, I'm doing a new thing. And, and it all has begun because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. The catalyst was Jesus, his death on the cross for us. And Paul knows this and he's writing about it. So don't miss this. Before we ever can talk about something new in us, it's first what Christ has already done for us. And so today we're going to talk about five marks, okay, of a new heart. Five marks, kind of diagnostic question. How would I know if I have a new heart? How would I know if I really am being transformed by the gospel and what Christ has done? Five marks. We're going to talk about gratitude. We're going to talk about joy, confidence, encouragement, and, and love, all right? So first, I can say these are marks. These are proofs. Right? You might even, how do I know? How, how would we know if we're really being transformed and have received the grace of Christ that's this catalyst? How would we know? And we're going to see it here, evidenced by what Paul says in these first 11 verses of this amazing book. I'm going to set up the book a little bit for the series ahead. This is clearly um, Paul writing. He's the author. It's always thoroughly Pauline uh, in its, in its uh, authorship. And uh, I want you to look at verse one of chapter one, Paul and Timothy. Now, if you've been with us, pause. Um, this is before first Timothy. Okay. So he's not yet the pastor in Ephesus where he was in first Timothy, where we spent the summer. This is, um, some years before. In fact, Paul, so important to understand this entire book and what we're trying to talk about today is the fact that, that, uh, he has been now arrested. Okay. You might remember he has this dramatic experience where he's come to Christ um, a really dramatic, probably about 33, 34 AD. So it's just a year or two. Um, he'd been persecuting the church. We've seen the book of Acts. He is a jihadist. I mean, he is after, he's, he's looking to, to end this new movement that has now begun, okay, back in the early part of his, of his uh, life here. And now we're some years later, but he has this dramatic experience. And, and I mean, he went from being a persecutor of the church. Now he's in prison how about this? Because he's a leader in the very movement he sought to destroy. And really, this is amazing, right? And he did have an incredible transition or, or conversion in his life. And, but everybody, you know, here's the thing. Nowadays, everybody's talking about, you know, like, like Kanye got saved, you know, or Bieber is on fire for Jesus or whatever. And I'm over here going, he, he saved me, <laughs> me, right? Listen, if you're not the most sinful person you know, you don't know yourself very well. He saved me. Yeah. And we, I have a story, yeah. right? And this is what Paul would say to all of us. He says, listen, this is what marked you. And so if you listen to this, you apply this, and I'm going to talk to parents, but really all of us, students, if every day we can focus on these marks of what it means to live a different life, it's going to change this. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi with, with the overseers and deacons. So he's saying the leaders, the pastors, that's overseers, deacons, those who are serving, everybody in the church. And he says, we are servants of Christ Jesus. He, he puts Timothy up on that platform with him, which he did all the time, raising him up. We've got to keep raising up the next generation. This is the first Christian community in Eastern Europe, by the way, Philippi. This is, uh, um, it's what's known as one of the prison epistles. We got Colossians. We've got Philemon. We've got, uh, we've, we've got uh, the, what is the other one? The other one is yeah, uh, Ephesians. Ephesians is the other one. But he finds himself now in Rome. He talks of the, the, the Roman guards. He speaks of the Caesar's household. He's there uh, possibly awaiting, in fact, ultimately his execution. So he's there. And how about this? This is great. He always wanted to go to Rome. He gets arrested, gets a free ride to Rome. Uh, Roman government pays for him to get there, right? God's going to get you where he wants you, by the way. Yeah. Do you know this? He's going to get you where he wants you. Uh, by his sovereign hand, he places Paul there with, uh, with, with prisoners around him. And he said, okay, I'm just sharing the gospel here. 
I just talk about Jesus. Watch this. In the first two verses, he mentions the catalyst of his life change three times. Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus three times in the first two verses. He's, I mean, he's barely in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Let me ask you this. How long do people need to be around you before they hear you talk about Christ Jesus? Ever? How long would people know you before you start talking about Jesus? How about this, this week? How about this, this school year? Jesus on your lips. Do you talk about the name of Jesus? It's one thing to be morally good. And yes, it points at our good works, right? So that others may glorify the Father who's in heaven, Jesus said. But we speak Jesus. We, we say his name. Paul is all about it. He's able to write at least. This is probably around 62 AD. So some years later after his conversion, he's been at it for a while. He's been planting churches. He's been on missionary journeys. He planted this church. And so probably about 62 AD. But I want you to see what, what he says here in, in verse 2. Watch this. Or we'll, wait, before we get there, let's do this. He says, to the saints. All right? To the saints. The word in the Greek for, uh, for saints is hagion. The word hagios uh, means holy. And so hagions is holy ones. And even as, as Chi-Chi said earlier, we have been made holy by his righteousness. So when we think of saints, don't we? We often think of, uh, you know, Mother Teresa, you know, or somebody who's been named a saint because of all the great things they've done. That's not what this means. This means ones who've been made holy by the only one who is holy. So if you have received Christ, his righteousness now covers you. Your sin for his righteousness, the great exchange, you are a saint. You're a saint, okay? Turn to somebody next to you and say, you're a saint. You're a saint. You're a saint, all right? Yeah, even if you're going, I don't know. But yeah, yeah I'm say, you're a saint. Because if you've been made holy by him, received his grace, then you've been made holy. Look at verse two. Grace, watch this. What do you need more than this? Grace to you and peace. What do you need more than grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? Right? Two of the greatest things we all need. Here's what I want you to see. The first thing really underneath all of this mark of a new heart is gratitude. Gratitude. Are you grateful? How would I know? Ask somebody. Ask somebody close to you. Ask a roommate. Ask a friend. Ask your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your spouse. Ask, ask your kid. Am I, am, am I grateful? Do I come across as a grateful person? Are you bold enough to ask that question? If you're, if you, if you're grateful, you're going to do what Paul has done. Say so. You would say so. You would express it. One of the things I want you to do this year, every single day, parents, this is a great, this is a great exercise. We used to do this with our kids when they were younger around that. Anytime you finally gather for a meal or something like that, maybe you do every day. Hey, let's, let's just stop. We're going to pray. But before we do, real quick, what are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for? Let's instill that in our children. What are you grateful for with all that some of you are going through? Some of you are going through the hardest moments of your life right now. I'm aware. I'm looking at your faces. And I know your story. What are you grateful for? Because gratitude then reminds us of how good he is. Look at verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day when I got there until now. Paul is so grateful. He's just grateful, expressing his gratitude, and he's in prison. And he's grateful because he's saying, God's doing a thing in you. I, I just want to be with you. I love you. Do you express that kind of love? I had a, a longtime friend of mine just prior to this service. We were talking, and she's just telling me how much, how grateful she is for me. I mean, my, you know, my heart's just filled up. I'm like, yes, I need that. I need more of that, right? We all need to be encouraged in our gratitude for one another just to say, I'm grateful for you. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm grateful for you. Say it right now. You may not know him. I'm grateful for you. I am grateful for you. You may not know him because it's like your worship. I'm worshiping with you. I'm just grateful. You're encouraging me by being here. I am grateful for you. Let's be a people who are grateful. How would you know you're telling people? And then look at what he says. He says, I, I pray with joy. I, I, I serve 
with joy. He's grateful, but the next mark of a changed heart is joy. You see that? Gratitude leads to joy. And he knows the source of his joy is Jesus Christ. He knows that it's Jesus. He's going back to Jesus. And Paul would say, I pray with joy, like he does here. I serve with joy. I fight with joy. I, I continue on in joy. I'm going to give up in joy. I'm going to keep going in joy. Joy comes because we know that Christ, he loves us and he has us in his hands. Our, 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 our joy, our happiness, right, is not found in our circumstances. That's the way the world goes. That's all we know. In fact, you might know the word hap means luck or good fortune. So happiness is based on your good luck, good fortune. If things are going well, circumstances are good, you're happy. Until they're not, right? Joy cuts through all of that. Being a Christian, listen, is not that you receive Christ and all will go well with you. Now, most of us go, well, of course, life's hard. I, mean, I know that. But then when trouble comes, and even there, the more religious we are, right? Lord, I've been praying. Look at all my trouble. I've been praying. You know, that this, I've been praying for a new job. I'm still stuck here. I've been praying for a new boyfriend. Don't like this one. I've been praying for a new one. And I still don't. And look, at, do you not? You don't love me. And that's what we do. Our circumstances even determine our faith so often. And yet we know that if we get Christ, this Christianity, if we get Christ, he's more than enough as we've been singing. Through every circumstance, whatever comes my way, I can trust in him. And that he's at work, as we're going to see here, he's doing a new thing in me. And so to be rescued by him brings gratitude. It brings joy. Look at this. It brings confidence. I love this. Look at verse six. This is a happy book. Y'all getting happy? Joyful. Y'all happy. Okay. Verse six. And I am sure of this. He's certain. He knows. He is positive, certain. He knows this is sure. What is it? That he who began, this is our verse for the week, by the way, memorize this, that he who began a good work will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. What is this day of Christ? This is where all of history is heading. You hear people say that? This is where history is heading face to face with Jesus. To be totally transformed, finally sin free, finally uh, away from all that, that keeps us down in the craziness of this world. And we're going to be standing before him and he is going to finish the work that he started. God is a finisher. He is the one who will complete it. And he says, I'm sure, I'm certain, I'm confident. What is he confident in? Look at this. He's confident that God is faithful to do what he says he's going to do. And God has said, you're going to be totally sanctified. So he speaks of what God has done for us in Christ. But now he's speaking of, look at this, a good work in you. Not, not simply what he's done for you, what's already been accomplished on the cross. Now he says he's doing a good work in you right now. And it will not be stopped. I have confidence in this. You are going to continue to be transformed ultimately, become like him, like Jesus. That's where all of it's heading. So we can look at others, friends. You can look at me. We can look at one another and say, God, I'm not done with you yet. Turn to somebody next to you. Come on. God's not done with you yet. Tell him he's not done with you yet. He's not finished with you because he's working he's work in all of us. We're just, I'm just trying to get us to encourage each other today, right? He's not done. And y'all, thank you for the grace. Extent. He's not done with me. Somebody say, praise God. He's not finished with me. And I'm so glad he's not finished. I want to be like Jesus. What is it that he's begun? He's begun this gospel transforming work. You need, you and I needed a heart transplant. We needed a new heart. He came and he gave us his heart. He, he gave us his, our, our sin for his righteousness. The great exchange. So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so this thing is taking full effect and he's not going to stop till it's done. Be encouraged today. Some of you came and you're about to give up. I mean, some of us just like, we're starting a new, I just want to, I got, I got back from, you know, getting away a little bit, um, on a vacation. Has that ever happened to you? You get back and you're like, I need a vacation. God, I'm just, I'm tired. You know, I'm tired. Some of us feel that way. Some of our teachers, I mean, it's been like we had to teach and meet the teacher and all that. <laughs> Day one, I'm, I need a break. I'm tired. 
You know, and so we, we just got to keep pressing on, knowing that he's at work, even through, yes, whatever circumstance come our way. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. It is right for me to feel this way about you all. He, he, can't, he just keeps telling him, I love you, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of this grace. Isn't that great? We're all in this together. I've received this grace. You've received this grace. This is a place of grace. We're a people of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. All that I've gone through, you continue to love me. See, that's what we need to do. Just keep on loving. We're going to love our children. We're going to love our kids. We're going to love our our teachers. We're going to love each other through it all, even when we might disagree. But here's what happens. When we, when we realize I'm a part of what God is doing in the world, and I'm not alone. I'm in this with others. I become a part of what God is doing, his restorative agenda in the world. So when our hearts are changed, we see the world differently. It's like we're going, wait, it's not right to live in a world where children don't have food to eat. It is not right for us to be in a world where certain schools don't have all the resources they need. It's not right for, for kids to not have, have enough or, or, or families to not have food to eat. And so we as a church, you know this, we're always seeking to give and always help others. And so throughout the past year and a half in particular, we've stepped up with new hearts collectively to join God's work in the world. And we've been able to give. We've been able to feed families in our city. And you, you don't even know, even around the world. Through our mission partners in India, where the, where the, the, you know, the Delta variant just is going nuts. And, and, and we're hopeful that it, it's going to peak and drop quickly, as it has done in a couple of places in the world. We're praying that that's going to happen. But in India, where they're already poor in the areas where we're serving, we were able to feed, I mean, hundreds of kids and families through, through this time because of your generosity. And now we have opportunity always right here, not just global, but local to be right there. Uh, Jack Lowe Elementary, be in the Victory area, to be there to serve and to help and be there for them. I hope that you will. Right outside the door over here, if you're here in the room to my right, is where um, Jessica, Sandra Barrios, others will be. Just go by and encourage them. We'd love for the teachers to be over there. Just go by and just encourage them. Tell, tell them how much we love them. We're here for them. So many of you are volunteering over there, and we need more, more, and more. What's the best way to love God? Love people he loves. That's it. Love people he loves this week. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, um, I used to wash the car with my dad. I realized later I got older than I had kids of my own. He didn't ask me to be a car washer because I was a great car washer. I wasn't that good at it. Mom would have me come in the kitchen and make some cookies with her. And I, I was throwing flour everywhere, you know, dry, spilling milk, whatever else. Then I became a dad. And then I get my kid. I'm like, I can't. I want my kids to come out. Y'all come help me wash the car. This is going to be fun. Why? Because they're so awesome at washing. No. I want to be with them. I want to be with them. Friends, Listen. The Father wants to be with you. He's saying, we got something to clean up. We got work to do. Come on, I want you to get over here. You are messy. You're ridiculous. You're a mess. Get over here. I love you. Help me. Let's go. Let's do this together because I want to be with you. Watch this. And this is where I am. I'm not over here. I'm over here. I'm not in your little selfish place. I'm over here. Come on, let's go. Let's clean this up. Let's wash this together. You're going to be spraying water everywhere, soap getting all over the place. We're going to have a blast. Let's go. Friends, the ones who are most joyful in the world, the ones who are grateful, joyful, confident that God's doing a new thing in me are those who are encouraging each other and encouraging others by joining God in what he's doing in the world. And if you want to do that, please, let's serve each other here. Can I say it? Some of y'all, maybe you've been in the connect group just a little too long. It's time to just say, I want to serve kids. I put me where you need me. I've been hiding out a little too long. How can I go mentor some students? How can I help at Jack Lowe? What can I do? Look at this. Encouragement marks the life of a disciple. Encouragement is what it is. Now look at verse eight. For God is my witness. As we land this, how I yearn 
for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. This word affection is a unique word. It literally means, sorry, bowels. What it means is deep, deep within. That, that was the center of emotion and passion. And Paul's saying, man, this inner, within my inner being, I have such great affection for you all with the, well, look at this, with the affection of Christ Jesus. I love you like Jesus loves me. You see where it starts with his grace and then it flows out of us to others. And then look at Paul's prayer. Here's how we're going to land. All of this goes, okay? Gratitude. We have joy. We have confidence. We have encouragement. And then all of this leads to one single thing. Look at his prayer and see if you can see what it is. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that, he uses that henna clause in the Greek often, the purpose clause, so that you may approve what is excellent, so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. He keeps going to that. This is where all this is heading. Don't forget, God's doing a thing and he's not going to be finished until he's finished, but he's going to finish it. And then he says, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, not our righteous works, his work, fruit through Jesus to the glory and praise of God. Everything to the glory and praise of God. What is his prayer here? In a word, love, that you would know the love of God that you would continue to grow in the love of God. This is, my, this is marked in my Bible. This is my prayer for our church, that you, that I, would know the love of Christ more and more and more. Lord, keep showing. Keep revealing it to us. Keep allowing me to be that person who loves, who loves, who loves. Listen, friends, God loves you. He is at the beginning. He's in the middle, and he is at the end. He's outside of time. He's already seen you through. He's already seen the other side. He sees the future, who you are becoming just as clear as he sees yesterday. And he is doing a work in you. He will not finish. He will not finish until it's complete. And you can rest in that. And it all began when Jesus went to the cross for us after living the perfect life as a substitute for us. He then goes to the cross and Jesus says, it is finished. And there began the work that would not end until you see him face to face in glory. So here's the crazy thing about the Christian life. It's not so much becoming something you're not. It is that. It's really becoming who you already are in him. Lord, conform my heart. Change my heart to become just like you. A life of gratitude life of joy, of confidence, encouragement, of love for others in every way I can express love to others. Let's do it this week, all right? Let's pray together. And then we're gonna pray, uh, commission us out of here. Now, listen, friend, you might be here and you've never received Christ as your Lord. Uh, you, you can proclaim it today. Is he your savior? By faith, receive his grace right now. He, he died on the cross for you. Be clear about this. Christianity is not getting better, working harder, doing all the religious stuff. It's believing more deeply what Christ has already finished for you and receiving that and living in that and out of that. So right where you are right now, if you don't know for sure, would you just, right, you might be at home, you're in this room, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe by faith. I believe. Help me with my unbelief. But I receive your grace, your forgiveness. And I give my life to you. Do that work in me. That I will love as you love me. And Lord, I pray for everyone here. We all give our lives anew to you at the beginning of this school year, this new season of our lives. You make all things new. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.